was a fantastic win for our team. Um, I had nothing but respect for Vermont, their players, their coach. Coach is one of the best coaches in the country. Um, they are old. They had eight guys that are graduate students or seniors out there. Um, they can run their offense in their sleep. Um, and then Ben, I don't want to screw up his last name, 24, was the best player on the floor of the first half. We couldn't guard him. And that's um, so why they had the lead. So um, I was watching film after the GW game, and I was like, I don't know if we can guard these guys. Uh, they're just tough matchups. They can pick and pop. And we guarded differently depending on who we had in the game. And our guys did a great job of locking in with the game plan. But I've been doing this a long time. And, um, you know, that last 10 minutes was as good as one of my teams have ever played defensively. I've had a lot of really good defensive teams. That was that was something else. We did a great job of playing shots. We kept the drive in front of us. Um, we got two layups, a jump hook, and then a layup on a drive. But our guys were terrific. Um, and then we gave them one offensive rebound, uh, uh, two offensive rebounds during that stretch. But besides that, we were great. So really proud of our group. I didn't want to play this game. I was so mad at my assistants for scheduling this game, a veteran team this early. And our guys did great. We really helped us. It's going to make us a much better team. Questions? We love our clients, and you'll see that if you trust us at the Jackler Small Group, the big dogs from the small firm. Find us online at bigdogsmallfirm.com. Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support. Viner Forgates makes your company work. On the subject of defense, I know you guys mixed some things up a little bit there in the second half, uh, different looks on Shungu. Uh, just what was kind of behind that, obviously, Chris trying to keep in front of you, I guess, in a lot of ways, but also also adjusting to Powell and kind of maybe go a little smaller overall. You try to turn into Don Marcus over there, <laughs> asking X and O questions. Um, we made one adjustment on our ball screen defense with Q. Um, what you do, we didn't switch his ball screen defense till the very end, the last three minutes, two and a half minutes. But that was really the only adjustment. We were happy with our defense. We had to guard the ball better. And Ben got tired. He had to, he had to carry their team, and he just, he, he'd go by us in the first half, second half, he couldn't go by us as well. And we, we guarded the ball better. And I thought we faked and recovered better you know, we were kind of standing and watching, and you know, because we didn't, we wanted to stay home. They have a bunch of good shooters, so we wanted to stay home, and we made them play one on one, which is, I mean, you watch watch Vermont play not today, and it's really fun to watch. But we tried to get them out of that style and make them play one on one, and it's a credit to our guys. Jacob, right here in front. Seemed like the team settled the shooting a little bit faster, but. You know, it's still down at the half. You know, what, what are you yeah. seeing that you think is kind of causing those early shooting problems? Um, I don't have an answer for the shooting problems, but we're down at half because Vermont's really good. And we have six new guys in our top nine out there. And we're, we're, and we're more talented, I get it. And showed on the boards in the second half. And Juju had some big offensive rebounds. We had some great hustle plays out there. But I, if I had an answer for the shooting, I'd fix it, right? 19% uh, we're shooting in the last two games from three. But they're good shots, right? So, like, if we're shooting terrible shots over hands, then I'm worried um, because our guys aren't getting it. But we shared the ball today. Um, we just didn't make shots. And it was almost comical. You know, when we were up six, we missed the three wide open ones in a row. And then they go down. I swear the guy shot the ball 10 foot, one inch high, and it went in somehow, right? And so they cut it to three. So it's just basketball is a long season. Um, when you have six new guys that have never played at Maryland, it's a big deal now. We have some guys that have played here, right? And so it's an adjustment to them shooting the ball. But we, if we guard like that, it doesn't really matter, right? If we rebound like that, it doesn't really matter. Sam, in a second. Coach, Simon Wright got some excitement yeah. on today. What have you seen from him in practice? I mean, did you push that button, and what do you think about his performance today? Well, we love him. All the guys love him. He's really smart. He knows every position on the floor. And they were so small. We've been playing Pablo at the back of four. Today we went small with Simon just so we could switch things. Simon, excuse me, Pablo's played the five his whole life. Now we're trying to teach him the four. So when you're out there switching and doing things, that's a lot coming at you. We do think Pablo can guard the ball well, but we just felt Simon would be better there. Plus he helps us offensively because he's just a really good passer and ball mover and hit the big three out there and had the hustle play. That's why we do it. I've been wanting to do it. Um, I think Simon's 
could become a part of our rotation every game, whether it's a small team or a big team. We'll see moving forward. Hi, Coach. Uh, this game was rather contentious, and in your past few matches, there have been quite a few fouls on the board. How do you feel about this more aggressive play that you're seeing? Yeah, I mean, I haven't watched the film. I, you know, the refs said the first one in front of their bench, the green shirt pushed us first, and Eric just stood up for himself. And that kind of got us going, right? Got the fan base going, got, got us going. Uh, we needed it. I was, I was really on the guys about playing harder. So we went our private scrimmage big. We went our exhibition big, went our first game big. Our guys don't know how hard it is to win and how hard you have to play. We learned that today, you know, and, um, you know, we got better as the game went on. And, you know, I thought the second time the scrum happened, I thought they pushed us first again. So we're not going to back down uh, in those situations. So, um, but, uh, yeah, it was good. It was good to see a little fire today. Coach, uh, Julian Reese was a plus 15 on the floor and got the crunch time minutes. Yeah. What goes into the decision having him out there as opposed to Q? Well, Q is struggling with the double teams, which is not on Q, it's on me. I got to do a better job coaching um, and getting him ready for that. <clears throat> Three games in five days, I just, there's just, I, we really concentrated on guarding and we didn't have time to work and really be good uh, with everything. Um, we could guard better, I thought defensively with Juju out there. He can switch some screens. He can keep the guards in front of him. Um, but it was his offensive rebounding that was terrific. So he was playing well, and he can make free throws. Yeah. Um, so you go with the guys. You know, X gave us big minutes. We went with him. We stayed with him. And the guys adjusted quicker. We couldn't adjust the other night, no matter how many times we talked about the guys didn't adjust. So we jumped them pretty good yesterday, and they adjusted quicker tonight. And Coach uh you mentioned kind of um, having a small lineup assignment. Could you see potential uh, down the down the line where you maybe play Julian and Q together at the four and five, maybe Dante at the three a little bit? Yeah, I don't know about Dante at the three. We'll see. And that's just um, me knowing Dante. Um, and we could keep it real simple. We played Juju and Q together the other night for about two and a half minutes. Okay. We think as the season goes on and the Big Ten comes in, you're playing against bigger teams. Yeah, I think we can play him better, especially if Juju keeps. So you got to give me time to teach Juju how to guard a four. It's just not going to happen overnight. So, like, give me some time, and then we'll, we might be able to. It's more about the defensive end than it is the offensive end. Ed Tiering, do you have a timetable for James Graham's return, and how has his absence impacted the team's versatility? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I expect to meet with James on Monday. Uh, we just had too much going in between. Uh, so I'll meet with James on Monday, and we'll see where it goes from there. Okay. Right here. Last one, please. Hi, Coach. Can you talk a little bit about the impact that Hakeem Hart has when he's on the yeah. court, even if it's like not necessarily shooting, but all the other ways that he does? Yeah, he's just a really good player. Um, you know, the other night he had four steals or something like that, and <clears throat> was huge for us. <clears throat> had the pitch ahead three, which I thought was the best play of the game because he had a big steal. Was, they were getting ready to get a layup. Um, he just does all the little things. Um, you know, I went with X more than late because of defense. You know, our offense wasn't great, so let's just lock in on defense and try to outscore him that way. And, and uh, so he gave us huge minutes. But Akeem, we love Akeem. And if you look back last year when we won, Akeem always played a lot of minutes because we, we couldn't take him off the floor. We still feel the same way. We're just a little deeper this year, so we got to figure it out game to game. But we love him. Um, we want him to be a little bit more part of the offense. He does too. We think he can score. He scored the other night for us off the dribble. We think he can make a lot of threes for us as the season goes on. Okay, thanks, Coach. Yeah, thank you.